Welcome to Belief Systems, the first course in the Venture Capital and Entrepreneurship Specialization. In this course, we will examine our own belief systems about venture capital and about entrepreneurship. Whenever I have taught this course to MBA and Executive MBA students, I have discovered that most students do not have the right belief systems to make sense of the world of venture capital and tech startups, which is why a lot of activity in this world seems insane. Do you find it weird that Whole Foods, a grocery retailer in the US, founded back in 1980, was acquired by Amazon in 2017 for $14 billion when it had revenues of $16 billion and profits after tax of $245 million, whereas Instacart, founded recently in 2012, is valued at $39 billion in 2021 almost three times the valuation of Whole Foods, despite having revenues of only $1.5 billion, 10 times less than Whole Foods, and never having made a profit? Or do you find it weird that Barclays, an international banking conglomerate founded a century ago in 1896, is valued at $37 billion in 2021, when it has massive revenues of $28 billion and profits of $3.3 billion, whereas Revolute, a challenger bank founded recently in 2015, is valued almost comparably at $33 billion, when its revenues are only $361 million, 77 times less than Barclays, and when it's losing almost as much money as the revenues it brings in? Have all the investors gone insane? Or is it that your belief system is missing something fundamental about the world of venture capital, tech startups, and entrepreneurship? This is what I will address in this first course on belief systems. We will ask some tough questions and look at numerous examples to construct better frameworks or better mental models of thinking about venture capital and entrepreneurship. But before we start, I want to explicitly state three disclaimers that you must know about this course, as well as this specialization. First, you must know that the rules of business are not like the laws of physics. You can always find counterexamples to any rule of business, even if I tell you something simple and conventional. For example, if I tell you that it is important to find a co-founder for your entrepreneurial journey, you can easily point me to half a dozen counterexamples like Tumblr, Plenty of Fish, Paytm, and FireEye, which all succeeded with a single founder. But this is the nature of any important business question. Business is about dealing with uncertainties, a rule of business that works well even for 70% of cases is as rare and valuable as gold. Especially if you talk about cutting-edge areas of business like venture capital and entrepreneurship, no one can offer you a useful rule written in stone. Hence, I can only describe strategies and patterns that have a high probability of working for you. In business, a high probability is the best that you can hope for. This is not a field that deals with certainties. Second is a disclaimer about the design of this course. The vast majority of students that I teach do not have a background in venture capital and entrepreneurship. So their intuitions about this world are often wrong. In such an environment, if I do not choose a side on a topic of debate, if I only present all sides of a debate without presenting a conclusion, it leads to confusion and missed learning opportunities. Therefore, I have designed this specialization in such a manner that whenever I present a topic of debate, I will always choose a side at the end of the discussion. I will prescribe a way of thinking based on my experience. Therefore, for this specialization, I am going to be opinionated, I might be politically incorrect, and I might even be wrong because we are discussing cutting-edge topics from the world of business. Hence, this specialization has been designed for adults. It is up to you to judge what you want to take away from this specialization. Third is a disclaimer about my usual audience for whom this specialization has been designed. I ask students to fill in a quick survey before taking this course. 
If you are watching this video as part of the venture capital and entrepreneurship specialization, you too would have filled out such a survey. One of the questions in the survey asks you to rate yourself on your determination to find success in your professional life. Here are the results from a typical MBA classroom at IIM Bangalore. About 75% of the students identify themselves as having high or enormous determination. I call such students people of determination or pods. Another question in the survey asks you whether you have ever gamed a system to your advantage. About 80% of MBA students I teach usually have this self-realization that they have indeed gamed a system or a situation to their advantage. The remaining 20% may be too young to have faced a moral choice of this nature or are yet to develop this articulation about themselves because most humans do not lead pure white lives. So a fundamental assumption made in the design of the specialization is that the students I'm teaching are all ambitious and hardworking and want to create a large impact on the world in their lifetime. Because in the absence of ambition and hard work, there is little reason to talk about entrepreneurship, which is one of the hardest things that anyone could do in their professional life. One more thing, I have lived in India all my life, raised venture capital here, built and sold startups here, and the learnings in this specialization are my life's learnings. So even though most examples in this specialization will be from global startups and entrepreneurs, you may find India's unique context seeping through in some of the learnings. If you don't know much about India, just know that we are a country of 1.3 billion people that was devastated by British colonial rule for centuries, until 1947 when we gained independence, only to then be devastated again by socialism, until 1991 when my people slowly began finding their dignity back as economic reforms brought about the end of socialism and the creeping advent of capitalism in India. Today that slow creep has become a flood with tens of thousands of startups rapidly changing every facet of life in India. So with these disclaimers, let's get started. Let's begin by addressing the motivations behind entrepreneurship. If you were to start a startup and become an entrepreneur, why would you do so? What would be your motivation to become an entrepreneur? Think about it for a minute. Try to come up with at least three reasons. I will start analyzing possible answers to put together a framework in the next video. Hey there, I'm KJ Saxena, founder of Relentless VC. The video you just watched is part of the Venture Capital and Entrepreneurship Specialization, which is available absolutely for free on relentless.ventures. Go check it out. If you're a tech startup founder and want to raise money from us, you should apply on our website. Lastly, if you like this video, do subscribe and share it with your friends.